Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to watch Avengers Endgame to see how accurate all the science and technology in this movie really are. That is a real fruit, by the way. That's not something that Marvel invented. That's a Kiwano fruit or a horn melon, and you can probably buy them at your local grocery store. It tastes like a banana, cucumber, and lime spawned a death child. And it's, I'm not one for like sweet foods anyway, and I've only had this once in my life. It was not bad, but I wouldn't just like have it as like a regular snack and if Thanos is on a diet of these things, he doesn't have much longer to live anyway. Thanos happened and I got stuck in there. I'm sorry, that must have been a very long five years. Yeah, but that's just it. It wasn't. For me, it was five hours. See, the rules of the quantum realm aren't like they are up here. Everything is unpredictable. Is that anybody's sandwich? I'm starving. Time is really tricky everywhere um it he's certainly correct by the way time does work dif differently at the quantum realm and it works differently like here it's time is really tough to talk about uh, like uh, einstein tried defining it he could not complete his definition but what he left us with was his theory of relativity and what that states is that you know time and everything is relative but especially time and what that means is that you can only measure time against another unit of time and you can't really do that with other units of measure. Um, like for example, if you're measuring distance, one meter on the surface of the Earth is the equivalent to one meter on some random asteroid in space. But one second on Earth is not the same as one second on that same asteroid. Einstein's theory of relativity tells us the faster an object is moving, the slower time is acting upon it. And that's why astronauts in space age a little bit less than their friends and family on Earth. It's not a huge difference, but it, we can measure it. The way that we measure time on Earth is how long it takes the Earth to rotate around the Sun. And that's changing, actually, depending on how much the Sun and Earth's gravity are exerting upon each other. Which is why one year on Earth is not the same as one year on Saturn. Right? They're both one year, which is a unit of time, but that time is different depending on where you are. At the quantum level, Scott Lang is moving very, very fast, which means he is aging much slower than everyone else who's not at that quantum level. There are actually multiple quantum levels, but we're not going to get into that for now. The one that he was at slowed time down just enough so that five hours for him was five years for everyone else. One last sim before we pack it in for the night. This time in the shape of a Mobius strip. Invert it, please. Processing. All right, give me the eigenvalue of that particle, factoring in spectral decomp. That'll take a second. Just a moment. I definitely knew that this scene was coming, and I am sorry to say to all of the Marvel fans out there, but Tony Stark got his math wrong. There is no such thing as an inverted Mobius strip. Mobius strip, or a twisted cylinder, is a single-sided, non-orientable object. And actually, what they're showing right here in this scene, that is a real Mobius strip. Like, that object is real, but it's single-sided, meaning wherever you start at, if you just go around the entire thing, you will end up exactly where you began. It's not like a ring where uh, on a ring, if you start on the outer surface and you just keep on rotating around it, you'll never get to the inner surface. That's not this thing. Like a Mobius strip, you could actually make it with like a piece of paper. It's not hard. Just cut out like one strip of paper, twist one end, and then tape the two together. And then you, you'll see that like no matter how you orient it, whether it's inverted, upside down, like left, right, it, it doesn't matter because it's still the same object. Like so an, an inverted Mobius strip is like saying an upside down cube. It doesn't make any sense. It, it, it's still the same thing. The part about eigenvectors and eigenvalues has some relevance. What they're used for is to determine long-term behavior for linear models. Here's the simple version of it. Let's say that you have a vector 1, 2, and after a function is applied to it, it becomes 2, 4. Then 1, 2 is an eigenvector with an eigenvalue of 2 because it was doubled. 
if vector 1, 3 becomes 2, 5, then 1, 3 is not an eigenvector because 1, 3 and 2, 5 are not going in the same direction. I realize that doesn't sound like simple, but that is the most straightforward way of explaining. I'm going to put that link in the description below if you want to read more about it, but it's essentially saying that if you start off at like a point, if you apply a function to that point, will you actually create a line? Meaning, will those two points ever intersect each other? And if they do, by a factor of how much. And if there's two points that will never intersect each other, then those are not eigenvectors. Whereas the two points that do intersect, those are eigenvectors. And by how much of a magnitude of change, that's the eigenvalue. I've already talked in detail about Iron Man's nano suit in my Infinity War video, so just here's a clip from that right here. Where'd that come from? It's nanotech, you like it? I definitely like the nanotech. It is really, really cool. Nano means 10 to the negative 9th, which is really, really small. Like, that's like comparing the size of a marble to the size of the Earth. As objects get really big or really small, the laws of physics governing them actually slightly change. Strength of material, melting points, even the color will actually change, depending on what kind of scale you're working with, like nano, regular, or like astronomical. When objects get smaller, their surface area to volume ratio really increases. And why that's important? is because the more area you have, there's more room for contact with other materials for more chemical reactions to occur. Not only more room, the reactions will actually occur faster. So when we see Tony like rapidly creating and destroying these new like technologies with the nanoparticles, it will happen that quickly. One of the signs a chemical reaction has taken place is a color change. What we see here is that the Iron Man suit is primarily red, but the sword that Tony Stark's make is gold. And funny enough, if you look at gold with the naked eye, it has the iconic shine to it, but when you break gold down into its nanoparticles, it actually appears red, or sometimes purple. One thing to note here is that mass is not changing. Like, no matter where the particles move, the overall mass of his suit will not be affected. I mean, the distribution of mass will definitely change. Like, if you have, like, a shield in one place, or if you're doing, like, the booster rockets, then most of the mass is at your feet instead of, like, to the torso. This is outlined very well in the movie because as the number of nanoparticles Tony Stark has access to decreases, parts of his suit are vanishing as well. Solid nanomaterials will actually behave like liquids if you group them all together. And you can easily see this on the beach. Like, if you go and you just fill a bucket full of sand, and you're pouring the sand out, the way the sand is pouring out of the bucket is the same way that water would pour out of that same bucket. Now imagine taking that sand and making Excalibur with it. <laughs> that's, that's basically what he's doing right now. The big question is, can he make the diversity of objects from the nanoparticles that he does in the movie? Like a sword, a shield, booster rockets, like stronger guns, and as far as I understand, no. You cannot do that. The nanotechnology today serves one purpose only as it was programmed for initially. What I mean by that is the nanoparticles that you use in scanning electron microscopes cannot be the same ones that you use to clean up oil spills in the ocean. Whenever Elon Musk feels like making an Iron Man suit and turning it into a nanoparticle like masterpiece, he'll do it whenever he feels like it. But as of right now, each nanoparticle or group of nanoparticles that you program can only be used to serve one purpose. One of the bigger issues with the nanotechnology as being used by Iron Man or Tony Stark is breathing. Like, you, as silly as it sounds, you don't want to breathe in these nanoparticles. And because they're so small, and especially like it here, like Tony is constantly changing shapes of the Iron Man suit to whatever he needed to be. But the more you make like alternate shapes, the more the nanoparticles are moving, the higher the chances you have of breathing those particles in. Then again, the arc reactor was killing him and he found a way to get around that, so I'm sure there are ways of going around the nanoparticles, like entering your body. One of the criticisms that I do have here is how the nanoparticles are housed. You can't keep them all in like one block on your chest because they're not being created as they disperse around his body to make the Iron Man suit. They're all already in one place. So that one spot is gonna be very, very heavy. I don't think he can just walk around with it like as casually as he is right now. It would make far more sense for Tony to like put like a backpack or some sort of vest on him because 
this is not possible. There's no way that you can have all those nanoparticles and have all that mass held in one place and then just be casual about it. The other aspects of Endgame, I've already explained in my other videos. Like if you wanted to watch more about Infinity War, there's some other stuff in there. Or if you want me to talk about Pym Particles, that's in my Ant-Man video, which I'll have all those at the end of this one so you can just click on the thumbnail. But really, like, I don't want to repeat everything I did because I made those separate videos for that purpose. So if you want to check out more explanations, go ahead and click on those. Enjoy the channel. Thank you guys so much for coming. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to watch anything else, like, Marvel-related, let me know in the comments down below. Guess what? The Gold Life is now an affiliate partner of NordVPN. Information is a huge commodity nowadays. Companies want to know where you live, where your cars park, what you eat, where you work, where you work out, the passwords you have, the websites you're on. Your personal information is being bought and sold by these giant tech companies without your permission. Protect yourself at all times on up to six devices using NordVPN. I have it on my laptop and my phone. That way whenever I go connect to a public Wi-Fi anywhere, I don't have to worry about a thing. Another cool deal is that you get to connect to other countries and get access to their Netflix movies and TV shows, giving you a whole new array of entertainment so you can binge even harder. Use my link in the description down below to get 68% off a two-year plan of NordVPN with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay fresh and stay golden.